Hello there! I wasn't exactly planning to follow a list of World War II movies with a review of a World War II novel, but sometimes things just work out that way. Today I want to spend a couple of spoiler-free minutes telling you about Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wayne? Wine? Ween? Not sure how to pronounce the last name. Um, names that start with W-E-I can be tricky like that. The setting of this book is the middle of World War II. A Scottish girl working undercover as a spy, codenamed Verity, has been arrested shortly after her arrival in Nazi-occupied France. She's being held in a Gestapo prison where she's been interrogated and tortured. Now she's made a bargain with them, promising to tell all the classified intel she knows. What we are reading is her written confession, except rather than giving lists of planes and airfields and contact names, she instead keeps writing about Maddie, the English pilot she met and became best friends with while they were both serving in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. The story of the friendship that inspires and sustains these two young women as they risk their lives is the heart and soul of the book. But it's also very much a war story, with daring flights, dangerous resistance work, espionage, and a desperate POW situation. The book has a lot of distinctive features. It's epistolary, told solely through written material, it has an unreliable narrator and a character, writing in the first person, referring to herself in the past in the third person. The story clearly required a lot of research, and while it does have a modern contemporary feel, it also stays true to its setting. I really enjoyed Verity's vibrant, colorful voice. She's funny and clever, she's got fierce Scottish pride, and an occasional cavalier attitude in spite of horrible circumstances. She's a person who makes it through dicey situations by pretending to be someone else. What makes it tricky for the reader is that you start to wonder when she's being herself and when she's pretending. It is a rather complicated, complex plot with a lot of twists, some of which can really blow your mind. It's the kind of thing that you want to go back to the beginning and reread right after or soon after you've finished it the first time so that you can sort everything out. In a way, I think a second reading is actually necessary because there's so much that's revealed in the second half that gives a new perspective to what you read in the first half. And I'd also suggest that it would be better to read a physical copy rather than an ebook or listen to an audiobook, because there are certain things you would miss with an audiobook, and it's just easier to flip back and forth and revisit earlier scenes in a physical copy instead of having to find something on an ebook. I know, because the first time I read it, I read it on the Kindle, and it was much better reading it in the physical copy. Comparing it to other World War II books I've read and loved, both fiction and nonfiction, I don't rank it as highly as The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, or The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, or Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand, but I really enjoyed reading it both in January and last week when I finished it the second time. I liked it even better the second time because I knew certain things to look for, um, and I felt I knew the two main characters better. This is a disturbing and sad story. There's a strong possibility it will make you cry. I did. But it's a striking tale of ingenuity, bravery, sacrifice, and above all, friendship. I could say more about it, but then it would be hard to do that without giving anything away. So I'll stop here. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. Bye!